All right, for our first introductory project, we're going to start by searching for Photopea, which is the web-based web photo editing software we're going to use in class for digital design. So the first option that you get there is mo most likely the one that you want. It's photopea.com. You can go ahead and click there to open up the website. This is a web-based um, application. So it is opened in Chrome as its new tab. And in class, I explained how to create an app out of this on your Chromebook, which is really easy. If you go over to the three dot menu and then scroll down to more tools and then click on create shortcut, you can give it a name. And I would suggest choosing to open as a window, which will isolate it in its own thing instead of opening as an as another tab it has its own specific window so I would click that to enable that and then press create I've already created mine so I'm just going to cancel this but go ahead and create one then once you've created the shortcut it actually appears in your app list so scroll till you find it and then you can launch it from here or you could right click or two finger tap to get the option to pin to the shelf. Mine's already pinned there, so um, it ju will just show up here on your shelf. Really easy to access next time. So let's go ahead and I'm going to close the Chrome tab, and then I'm going to open it now with my new app shortcut. You can see the difference. It maximizes your screen size, makes it nice and full screen. So for our first assignment, you'll need to grab the file from Google Classroom, which is the Potato Head PSD. Once you click on it, you see this preview, and it automatically gives you the option to open with Photopea because it senses that you have that available. If you don't see that, and this is what I recommend, even though you do see that, I, I would recommend actually downloading the file so you always have it on your device. So go ahead and click on the more actions in the upper right hand corner there, the three dots specific to this file, and then click on open in a new window. In this new window, you'll have the option to download the file. So look for that down arrow and click it, and it will download the file to your actual device. So it will be found in your downloads folder or wherever you choose to download stuff. I've downloaded multiple multiple times so the next step after you have it downloaded is to go back to Photopea and we're going to learn how to open a file so right here would be the option to create a new file we already have a file so I'm going to All right, you want to click on the file button and then choose open from the menu there Find your file, the one that we just downloaded, in your downloads folder. And then choose open. So this file has multiple images in it. And the goal for this project is to create a Mr. Potato Head. So of course we're going to focus on creating our body first. But before we even do that, I want to draw your attention to some of the basics of our workspace here. At the top, you'll see your main tabs for different options at the top. And then below that, you'll see these are controls for specific tools. And this will change based on which tool you have selected, which brings me to the next thing. This column on your left are all the different tools that are available to use. We're going to be focusing on the first four here. So the first tool is move, and I'm just going to show you how the options change if I click on a different tool. See these all change. According to which tool you have selected, you'll see different options up here. So we've covered this main options for tabs at the top, and then we have these specific to the tools options. And then here's the column of tools. And then over here on the right, is something that's very important. These are all of your layers. These are all the different things that are inside this document. There are multiple images, so each one is a different layer. To hide temporarily each layer, you can click on the eyeball. And that's not get, getting rid of it, it's just making it invisible for now. 
So to start off, I'm going to go ahead and close or uh, make invisible each of these layers. So I'm clicking on the eyeballs. So now I have a completely transparent project. Anytime you see this checkerboard, that means it's basically invisible. So I'm going to create a custom background color for my project. That's my first goal. So I'm actually going to create a new layer. Down at the bottom of the layers panel, you can see a bunch of different small buttons. The second to the right one, next to the trash can, is the new layer button. So click on that to create a new layer. At the top, you'll see a new blank layer. So the, the thing we want to do now is fill this layer with a color. To do that, filling is an edit function. So I'm going to go up to the tabs and choose edit and find the option for fill. And then the default is foreground. I want to change that to a custom color. So I'm going to click on custom. And right now if I were to click OK, it would uh, go to this black color. But I want to create a custom color, so I'm actually going to click on that thumbnail and it, this pulls up the color picker. So this works from the upper left hand corner down to the lower right hand corner. You can see it goes from light to dark, but also as you travel to the right it becomes more saturated with the color. So it becomes more red in this instance the farther to the right. Now I can choose any one of these colors a desaturated lighter red or a dark really saturated red. So any of these colors in the family of reds. Now if I want to change to a different family of color let's say blue, over here is a vertical column a rainbow of colors that you can choose from. This is your base color. And then from that you can choose a desaturated version of that or a dark version of that. Whatever looks good to you. I'm going to choose a blue background. And click OK and that just loads that into the thumbnail. So you need to click OK one more time to apply it. So now I have a new color background and I want that to stay my background so I'm actually going to move this layer to the bottom. To move a layer you just simply click on it where you see the the name of it and then drag it down till it's where you want it to be. I'm going to place it right above the background layer. Now that I have my background I'm going to focus on creating that potato body. So if I click on the potato layer, I can see the outline. If you don't see the outline, that means you're not on the Move tool, or you're on the Move tool, but you don't have Transform Controls enabled. That's one of the options at the top. It's a box that you can either check or uncheck. With it unchecked, you do not see the Transform Controls. I would recommend always leaving this on so that if you have a layer selected and you are on the move tool you can transform rotate scale the object and you can also see which layer you have selected that way so I have the potato layer selected but I can't see the image and that's simply because we toggled the eyeball off so click just to the left of the thumbnail preview there so that we can see that again. And now I'm going to zoom in. Since I'm using a laptop, I'm going to use the touchpad and like use two fingers to scrub, zoom in, or pinch to zoom out. All right, so now that we're zoomed into our potato, we're going to use our first selection tool. I'm actually going to skip over the rectangle select tool and jump right into the lasso tools. So if you scroll over that tool you can see the default is the lasso select tool which is a freehand selection tool. We're going to click and hold just for a second that tool 
and that's going to reveal some other tools hidden underneath it. The one that we're going to actually use for this um, image is the magnetic lasso select tool. So go ahead and click on that one as the option. The way this tool is designed is it can intelligently find the edge of an object. So it's freehand, kind of like tracing, but it's really hard to trace with a, a mouse. So it magnetically helps by connecting your selection line to the outline of whatever you're trying to select. So you can either help it out by clicking multiple times or you can do it all with one click and click and release. Once you start going around the outline, you can see it's kind of just magnetically snapping to the edge of the object. So the slower usually the better, so try to, you know, take your time. But with it zoomed in, it's really, in this white background, it's really easy to find the edge. So until you get close to the beginning point, go ahead and click just to make sure there's an end point close to that. And sometimes it goes ahead and closes the shape. If not, press enter and it should close to form a you know, complete selection with no openings. So this is a pretty good and accurate selection of the potato. And what I, my goal is to get rid of this white background. So we're eventually going to delete the background. But first, I'm going to zoom back out so you can see what's happening here. What I have selected right now is the potato. If I were to press backspace right now to delete, it's going to delete what I have selected. That is actually the opposite of what I want to have happen. So. I'm going to use Control Z to undo that step. And then before I remove anything, I want to make sure the background is selected. So right now the potato is selected, and I want the opposite. So that's called the inverse. So I'm going to go to the Select tool at the top. Select It's not a tool, it's a, it's a tab at the top. And choose Inverse. So now you can see on the outer edge of my project, everything is selected outside of the potato, which means the potato is actually not selected, but everything else is. So now when I press the backspace key, it removes the background. Now if you don't have a backspace key, you can press delete, or you can go to file, no edit, sorry, edit, and cut, it's the same thing. In this program it's called clear, so you can see in the history here I have cleared what I had selected. It's the same thing as deleting. Alright, so we've successfully removed the background for our first object. The last step is to make sure you deselect whatever you have selected right now. So I'm going to go to select and then choose deselect. Now I want to move my object and place it. So I'm going to go back to the Move tool, and I get that Transform box around it. I'm going to actually rotate it right side up. And then I could make it just slightly larger. Eventually I'm going to have arms and legs, so I want to give some space for that. And if you like to have it right in the center, you can position it in the center. And with this program, um, you don't have to click the check mark. If you move on to another layer, it automatically assumes you're happy with that transform. But you can press enter or the check mark to accept the transformation of that layer. So that's the first thing. Next, we're going to move on to the orange slices. We're going to use an orange slice for a mouth. So anytime you're working with a layer, you want to make sure that layer is selected. So even though I hid the potato by clicking on the eyeball and revealed the oranges, I am still on the potato layer, even though it's not visible. 
So any edits that I make right now would happen to the potato layer. I don't want to have that happen, so I want to make sure that I have the orange slices layer selected. That's the layer that I want to edit. And I'm going to choose one of these orange slices to use as a mouth. So I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to use this guy over here. You can choose any one that you want to. It's fine. Now I'm going to use two different selection tools for this. The first one is going to be the ellipse or elliptical select tool. So to get on that, long press the rectangle select tool till you see the ellipse select option there and click on that. And then I'm going to try to explain this, but the you're going to be creating a circle by clicking and then holding the click down. So this would be like a left click on a mouse, but I'm using a mouse pad. So I'm just clicking and then dragging away while holding down the click. Releasing the click is the very last thing that you will do. So you'll just have to hold it there while you make the circle. And you can see as I'm making my circle, it's drifting away from the original point that I clicked on. So to reposition it, I still have the click pressed but I'm going to now add the space bar. So I'm going to hold the space bar and then I'm going to use a second finger on the mouse pad to reposition the click. Yeah, re reposition the circle actually, back to the edge. Then once I have it there, I can release the space bar and then continue making my circle. And then it's just a bit of a adjust placement and then adjust size until you get it the way you want it to be and once it is where you want it to be you would lastly release the click then you've made your circle or ellipse selection so it's not going to be perfect because the orange slice isn't a perfect circle but it's doing what we want it to do so we're going to leave it like that the next thing we want to do is actually cut this circle in half so that it's just the lower half representing like a smile or a smiley face. So to do that I'm going to use the other shape selection tool, the rectangle select option, but I'm going to use it in a subtract mode. So up at the top in the options, the first option is replace, which means if I were to create a rectangle would actually replace the circle. So basically starting a new selection and deleting the old selection. I don't want that to happen. The next option is unite which would add whatever I select with the rectangle tool to the current circle. So it would be a, a circle plus a rectangle. That's not what I want. The third one is what I want is subtract. So if I draw a rectangle it's going to subtract that rectangle from the circle. So go ahead and select subtract and then I'm going to purposely create a larger rectangle than what I need, like width-wise. And then make sure that it crosses over at the halfway point of my circle. And then I would release the mouse. And you can see it sliced my selection in half and removed the top half of the circle. So now, just like the, in the last selection with the potato. I can see, I'm just, just going to zoom out here, I have the orange half selected. If I were to press the backspace key right now, it would delete what I want to keep. So that's not what I want. So I'm going to control Z that. And now I'm going to select the inverse. Go to select the choose inverse now you should see that the background is selected. And what I want to do is get rid of it, so I'm just going to press backspace to delete the background. And you can see the dotted line means stuff is still selected. So the last step would be to click on the Select tab and choose Deselect. So now I have, I'm going to go ahead and enable my uh, potato. I have a potato. 
and then I have orange slices for a mouth. I'm going to use the move tool and make sure the orange slice layer is selected so you see the transformed options there and move it onto potato but you can see the potato is covering it so that's no good so the layers over here determine what is on top and what's on bottom so I need to drag my potato to where it's underneath the orange slices now I can use the move tool go back to my orange slice and move it onto my potato and you may want to adjust the scale by grabbing one of the corners or if you want to you could rotate it slightly and then pos position it on the potato where you want it to be for now you can always change it later now we're going to move on to the olives so I'm going to go ahead and hide the potato and the orange slices and then select the olives layer I'm going to enable the eyeball so I can now see what's happening here and I'm going to use another ellipse select tool and create an oval I'm going to zoom in here I'm going to focus on let's go ahead and do this olive here you can choose any one you want to but this one to me looks like a good eyeball candidate um, you can see there's some watermarks on here because it came from a different website because of the scale it's not going to be that visible but you could choose this one if you want to it's a little bit more cleaner but I'm going to use this one over here actually let's go ahead and use this one because it, it does give me the opportunity to, to uh, show you something different I'm going to click to start my oval and immediately you can see there's no way to get the oval and the right angle to capture that olive so at this point I'm just going to have to guess and release the mouse to create an oval shaped selection so what I need to do now is modify my selection to rotate and be the same size as this olive so to modify a selection you're gonna to have to go to the select tab at the top and choose transform selection this allows you to move the selection around allows you to rotate the selection so it's in the right orientation there and then you can also scale the selection now if you're trying to adjust the height or width value and both of them change at the same time that would mean that they're locked together and this is the uh, this little keychain thing or whatever the chain link means the height and width are permanently linked together if I were to enable that if I try to change one value it changes both so it's just scaling the selection at this point. If I want to change them independently you need to disable that and then you can adjust the height and width value to be whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just place it there and drag this over here and the olive is not perfectly oval shaped so you're going to cut some of it off which is fine. So get what um, make the transformations however you want them to be to select the olive then you can press, press the check mark or press enter to select the transformation and now you have your olive selected I'm going to zoom out I want to get rid of all the other olives so I need to select the inverse let's go to select inverse and then I can simply press the backspace to get rid of it. I'm going to go ahead and reveal my potato now. So I have a mouth and now I have one olive for an eye. So I need to drag the potato layer underneath the olives again. Make sure that my layers are correct. And then I need to, I can see I have a selection still. So before I do anything else I'm going to click select and deselect. 
Now I can go to the Move tool and make sure I have all those selected. Move it into place and then scale it down to the size I want it to be for an eyeball. Oops. All right, and instead of going through that process again, I'm simply going to duplicate this layer. So I have two eyes. To duplicate a layer, there's two ways. There's a shortcut, which is Control J on your keyboard, which I encourage you to dedicate to memory because it, it it's what we do a lot. Of, we're going to duplicate a lot of layers. So otherwise, you can right click or two finger tap the layer and find the option to duplicate the layer there. So now I have two olive layers. One is a copy of the other, but I can't see it yet because they're just right on top of each other. So we go ahead and just move one away from the other. So you can see I have two eyes. And then just to make this a little more unique, I'm going to rotate one eyeball just to make it a little zany here and maybe scale it down a little bit. You could do whatever you like with your copy there. Alright, next we're going to focus on the broccoli. So I'm going to go ahead and select that layer and then enable the eyeball. And for this one, I'm just going to freehand draw what I think a shape of a nose would be. And the image that I'm using is upside down almost to what a nose would look like. So I'm going, you can either rotate it first to a position that looks more like a nose. Let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to rotate it so you can see kind of the nose shape I'm going for. And then I'm going to use the lasso tool, which is a freehand selection tool to kind of draw the shape of a nose. Go around like this. can't really see the shape I'm creating yet. But then I'll re inverse the selection and then delete the backgrounds. So you can see the result here. It's a very rough freehand kind of drawing, but sometimes that's the effect that you want to get. It's just an odd shape. So now I'm going to go ahead and place that on the potato. Go ahead and reveal all my other elements here. And then I need to force my potato to be underneath the broccoli. And then I can still see I have a selection, so don't forget to go to select and deselect. And then I'm going to use the move tool and make sure I have broccoli selected. This is a larger image, so. there's a little piece still left there. Because I rotated it first, a little part of it was on the outside. So I need to select that and get rid of it. This is good practice. If you ever see there's something in your image like this, some leftover stuff, you can use a selection tool, but sometimes if it's, in this instance especially, it's off by itself, I can use, uh, let's go ahead and use a selection tool. I'll use the lasso tool since that's what we're focusing on. Just draw a quick shape around it and then press the backspace to delete it. So that's one area I had. Then I want to make sure I'm over here. and then press backspace to delete that. Now if I move layers, let me go ahead and deselect. Okay, so I may have forced it to do something weird. So 
I think I can still transform it with the move tool. Let me go there. Yep. Showing there's something down here still in my image. So let me zoom in. Little tiny speck. Let me go to the move tool now. Okay. That's the result. There should be still a little bit of something up here somewhere, way in the corner. No big deal. Okay, now it looks like all I have is the broccoli in this. So now I'm going to resize. And you may want to ro rotate position it somewhere. Alright, next we're going to focus on the celery. And for this one we're going to use the polygonal select tool, which is pretty easy to use. It's a point and click So go ahead and long press on the lasso tool and then choose the polygonal lasso, lasso tool. And I'm going to just click around using straight lines to select the edge of the celery stalk that I want to select. Whoops, I closed the shape somehow. Just a point and click around the edge. This is really good to use for objects that are straight line or if you just want a nice clean edge to your selection. I'm actually going to select two little stalks here that are kind of together. back to the beginning point. It should automatically close the shape. So here's my selection. I'm going to go ahead and do select inverse and then the backspace to delete the background. And then I'm going to head, go ahead and reveal my potato. This time I actually want the celery stalks to be hidden by the potato. So I'll go ahead and deselect my selection and then use the move tool to modify the placement. Something like that. And then I'm going to duplicate this layer to, to uh, make the other arm. So that again, you could either two finger tap or right click and choose duplicate layer or use the keyboard shortcut control J. Then I'm going to move this to the other side and then just kind of rotate and scale it to make it look the way I want it to look. Something like that. Right, the squash I was going to use for legs, so I'm going to go ahead and hide the other layers. And to select this object, I'm going to use, we've used so far all the two shape types of selection, and then we've used all of the lasso tools. Underneath that, are two special options. Actually, there's three. The magic wand selects color groups, and then the quick selection tool finds edges. 
And then an object selection tool, it's actually a window that you draw and it tries to find the object inside that window. So we're going to focus on the first two because those are the most, um, probably most used and they've been around forever. So we're going to use the quick selection tool and pick one of the uh, squash here and then just click on the inside and then start to drag away from that point till you selected everything that you want to select. So I have a little bit of extra selected here. You can see there's it selected some of this line in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that selection and try again. This time I'm going to select from the top down. So if I click up here somewhere, it still selects that. It sees it as one object because they're similar in tone quality, so the darker tones there. But as a tool, as a whole, it really saved a lot of time to use this tool. It's a pretty intelligent tool. So from here, I could get rid of that those sides if I wanted to just by using uh, one of the other tools. I could use the rectangle select or I could use this lasso select tool and then just quickly draw. Actually I want to remove from selection. So I don't want to do that. Undo that step. So it's very careful. You want to be careful what before you make a selection to make sure the option is correct up here. So with the lasso tool, I want to remove from selection, subtract. So choose subtract, and then draw a shape around the extra stuff. And as soon as you've made the shape, it should disappear. So let me go ahead and do that for the other side. So this is a pretty good selection. I'm going to go ahead and select the inverse and then press the backspace key to delete. And I'm going to use this as a leg, so I'm going to go ahead and reveal the rest of my stuff so I get an idea where to place it. And then let me zoom out. I'm going to go ahead and deselect while I'm thinking about it. So deselect. Right now I can't even see it because it's hidden, but I just need to use the move tool and reposition it. Somewhere down here. Zoom out some more. And if you want it to stick out a little bit, you could rotate it. And then, just like before, I'm going to duplicate the squash. Control J. Move this one away. And I actually want to just go ahead and rotate it upside down. So it looks different. Is underneath there. Now I have some legs. All right, the pineapple is the last thing we're going to do for this particular tutorial. So go ahead and select that pineapple layer. I'm going to reveal it. A couple other layers here. So what I want to use is this little thing on the top for hair for the top of the potato. It's kind of a crazy shape. So this would be a very difficult object to select with any of the tools that we've already learned. It would take some time to select it. So what you'll find is the a lot of things today are um, images taken on a white background and that's on purpose so that it's easy to remove the background. So if an object's on a solid color like this, you can use the magic wand to select a color group. So the magic wand focuses on color groups. The quick selection tool focuses on edges, so it's going to find the edge of an object. The magic wand is going to focus on clusters of the same color group and select all of those. So I'm going to choose the magic wand. And the tolerance is something that I've been kind of playing around with. I think the default is 16. 
and simply click anywhere on the white background. You can see already a lot of this has been selected. There are some areas that you'll see later when we remove the background. So right in here, that's going to be uh, that's going to leave some white there. And there's some areas where it's not quite, you know, right on the object, but it's very close for a one click selection. It's done a lot of work for us. So what I'm going to do now is just delete what has been selected and we can see what the result is. So go ahead and select the inverse. And then press the backspace. Whoops. Here's where we had already selected the background. I forgot. So we've already selected what we want to get rid of. So I want to go back a couple set steps to make sure that just the white background is selected. Now I can just simply press the backspace button to delete it. And here's what I'm left with. So you can see most of it did a really good job. And if you want to be super detailed, you could go back and use um, the quick selection tool. Where is it? It's right there. It's a little bit too big of a tool. So maybe let's choose the lasso tool just for quickness here. And what I'm going to do is, before I do this, I'm going to deselect. So I can make some selections and remove it. So I'm going to just use the lasso tool to draw a little shape here. Cut out this. Press backspace. You get the idea. So anyways, if I wanted to be super exact about all this stuff, I could spend you know, a lot of time trying to fix it, make it perfect. But for this exercise, we're just going for good enough. So that's good enough for now. I'm going to um, make one more edit because I don't want to use the whole pineapple. And I do want it to appear as though it's on top of the potato. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I'm going to make one more selection. Now let's go ahead and use the polygon, polygonal lasso tool. And I'm going to cut off the bottom part of the, of the main part of the pineapple there. But I'm going to make a jaggedy edge for the bottom of this. So I'm going to go like in a zigzag pattern at the bottom just to make it interesting. And then I'm going to purposely just select, you know, outside the pineapple. Make sure I get all of the pineapple enclosed here. Back to my original selection point right there. So now all of that is selected and I want to delete it. So I'm just going to press the backspace to get rid of it. Now I have this nice edge here for a hairline or whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to deselect and then reveal my potato. And then all the different little elements here. I'm going to put the pineapple on top of the potato. So I could either move, I don't want to move the potato down because then that would move it, you know, underneath the celery and the squash. So I want it to stay there. So I just need to move the pineapple to where it's up above the potato layer, somewhere up here. And then I'm going to switch to the Move tool. And then I can move and scale to where it's the size that I want it to be. Somewhere about like that. Then I'm going to zoom out just to see my finished product. So at this point, all of these elements are in. If I wanted to move everything around, you can select multiple layers. So let's say I wanted to move everything. 
So I'm going to uh, select my first layer, scroll down to the last layer that I've modified, which is the squash, hold the shift key down, and then select the last layer so all the layers in between have been selected. And now I see a box around everything, my, my entire potato head project. So now I can drag it around and reposition it. And if I wanted to scale it up, I even could. So I could put it right there and then just grab a corner and scale everything up to fit inside my background. And that's it for this first project. We have focused on a lot of the different selection tools. Hopefully you've gotten a little experience of each one enough to have accomplished the task that we wanted to to do here which is just kind of a fun creative once you're done with your project there's a couple things you'll want to do first you'll want to save the project for sure to save your progress so you want to cl click on file and then I, I would advise you to click save as a PSD which saves all the layers so that you can go back in and adjust anything if you want to so click on Save as PSD, and you can choose to either overwrite your current project. So if you leave the name the same, it's just going to overwrite and then click Save. It will warn you that it's going to replace it. Or if you want to save it as a different version, you would have to modify uh, the name, change the name for something different, and then press Save. That will then download that file to your computer. And you can open it again later. If you want to export this as an image, just as its own picture, you can go to File and then Export As. And you have your different choices of file types. I would choose PNG. Um, it gives the, the best resolution for, um, for digital art like this um, in my opinion so PNG would be my suggestion to export it as an actual image